I will deal with the embryology of congenital anomalies of the gastrointestinal tract. I'm going to use clinical vignettes with um, multiple choice questions in order to use them as triggers for describing these congenital anomalies. Here, a two-day-old newborn male is cyanotic, attempts to swallow milk, result in collection of the milk in his mouth, and uh, after two days, he develops pneumonia. A tracheoesophageal fistula is suspected, which one of the following structures has failed to develop properly. The um, correct answer is the tracheoesophageal septum, and uh, this is to remind you of the formation of the tracheoesophageal septum. Actually, the lung bud uh, develops from the region of the foregut and then it will separate from the esophagus by the formation of the tracheoesophageal septum. Failure of development of this tracheoesophageal septum uh, will result in the formation of a fistula between the uh, esophagus and um, the uh, respiratory system with the trachea and this is responsible for the uh, cyanosis in this uh, case and it is responsible also for the development of the um, pneumonia because of the connection between the esophagus and the trachea. The tracheoesophageal fistula might or might not be associated with atresia of the esophagus. Atresia means uh, complete closure of a tube. Here there are the different types and variations of the trachea tracheoesophageal fistula with or without atresia. Uh, the first type is that there is atresia on both ends of the esophagus. Here we have a fistula with atresia distally and this is the commonest type. The esophagus ends blindly. There is atresia of the proximal part of the esophagus and the distal part of the esophagus is connected to the trachea with a tracheoesophageal uh, fistula. This is the commonest type and it is uh, probably it is it is this type of fistula that was present in um, the patient that is shown here in the question. So the patient is cyanotic and developed pneumonia because of the uh, presence of uh, the tracheoesophageal fistula and at the same time um, attempt to swallow milk result in collection of milk in his mouth. The milk was collected um, into the uh, mouth and in many cases the infant drools and this is uh, because of the um, atresia of the proximal part of the esophagus. In the other types there is atresia with um, tracheoesophageal fistula connected to the proximal part of the esophagus and distal part and here we uh, we don't have any atresia we only have uh, tracheoesophageal fistula. These are um, common variants the most common type of the um, Tracheoesophageal fistula is a fistula with the distal end of the esophagus and atresia of the proximal part of the esophagus. Now let's see this x-ray because x-rays are useful in the diagnosis of these um, conditions. Um, here uh, this shows an um, esophageal atresia without fistula. It is it's actually it is type 1. And uh, you can see in the uh, radiograph that there is a radio-opaque tube here and it is curling into the upper part of the esophagus indicating that there is atresia of the proximal part of the esophagus. At the same time, there is no air in the gastrointestinal tract, so there, which means that there is no distal fistula. Now this x-ray, um, again it shows that uh, there is a catheter that is coiled within the proximal part of the esophagus indicating that there is uh, atresia of the upper uh, part of the esophagus but at the same time we can see that there are gases in the abdomen indicating communication between the lower esophageal segment and the respiratory tree. In fact this patient has a combination of a tracheoesophageal fistula uh, with esophageal atresia um, in addition to imperforate anus. That's why we can see that there are uh, there's a lot of um, meconium in the, the large intestine. So um, uh, this type of um, tracheoesophageal fistula is type C, the one that is the common type of 
the fistula, the atresia of the proximal part, and the presence of gas in the, uh, in the gastrointestinal tract, indicating that there is a communication with the respiratory system. Here there is um, esophageal atresia with um, fistula that is, uh, conforms to type D here. You can see in the anteroposterior radiograph um, that the proximal part of the esophagus is distended with air, indicating its communication with the respiratory system, with the trachea. And also you can see it here in the lateral view. It is uh, greatly distended with air. And at the same time, you can still see air in the gastrointestinal tract, which indicates communication of the esophagus, of the distal part of the esophagus, with the trachea. So it, uh, this uh, patient has um, the abnormality shown in D. This is a rare variety in which there is fistula, but there is no uh, atresia of the esophagus. You can see here that um, uh, there is a, a dye that has been swallowed by the um, a newborn, and um, uh, this radio-opaque dye is showing the esophagus with the part of the dye is passing to the trachea because of the presence of the fistula. So both of them, the trachea anteriorly and the esophagus posteriorly, can be visualized. This is an oblique view, uh, so we can see the trachea anteriorly and the esophagus posteriorly. Finally, let's uh, review this case again. Uh, shortly after birth, an infant develops abdominal distension and begins to drool. So, so there is abdominal distension and drooling. Uh, when she is given her first feeding, it runs out of the side of her mouth. So the, the food, the feeding is running out of the mouth. There is no vomiting, but at the same time she coughs and chokes. So um, the abdominal distension indicates that there is a communication with the, uh, of the gastrointestinal tract with the um, trachea. And the drooling and the uh, fact that the uh, feeding is running out uh, of the side of her mouth indicates that there is a atresia of the proximal part of the esophagus. Physical examination reveals tachypnea and intercostal interaction and um, the esophageal anomaly that most commonly causes these signs and symptoms is illustrated by which of the uh, following. Here the best anomaly that goes with this clinical picture is shown in D and uh, here the, um, there is atresia of the proximal part of the esophagus and uh, this explains the drooling and the um, the fact that the feeding is coming out of the mouth, there is no um, vomiting. And at the same time, the distal end of the esophagus is connected to the trachea, and this um, represents um, the reason for the abdominal distension, because air is going to the uh, gastrointestinal uh, tract. Uh, coughing and choking after the meal is, uh, um, uh, is the result of the inhalation of the um, feeding through the trachea because of the um, atresia of the proximal part of the esophagus. So this will result in um, overspilling and inhalation of the food uh, or the milk uh, into the trachea resulting in the coughing and choking. This is actually, again I repeat, this is the commonest type of tracheoesophageal fistula with the esophageal atresia. I would like to remind you that it is the same as this one, the, um, the commonest type, the atresia of the, uh, the proximal part of the esophagus with the tracheoesophageal fistula connecting the distal part of the esophagus to the trachea. Now sometimes the, um, there is no atresia, but there is a stenosis. By stenosis means that there is narrowing of the esophagus. And here we can see that there is an 18-month-old male infant um, an older infant, unlike the cases that we have just seen, only two or three days old infant. This is an 18-month-old infant uh, presented with 12-month history of postprandial vomiting of undigested food particles beginning in the uh, weaning period. And this is because uh, the long history is because of the fact that the esophagus is not completely obstructed. It is narrowed. Barium study revealed that a tapered and aperistaltic 
narrowing of the distal esophagus about two to three centimeter long of course with proximal dilatation of the esophagus and this is the cause of this condition as you can see it's incomplete recanalization because the, during the development of the GI tract, there will be rapid proliferation of the gastrointestinal tube, and this will result in the obliteration of the tube during part of its development, and then the tube will recanalize. So, if there is incomplete recanalization, this will result in narrowing, it might result in duplication, and if there is failure of recanalization, it will result into atresia. Sometimes the stenosis is because of the fibrosis that results from vascular abnormalities or vascular accidents because of the reduced amount of blood supply reaching the developing tube and so this will uh, result in ischemia infarction and healing by fibrosis afterwards and resulting into narrowing again uh, you can see um, with this contrast uh, uh, x-ray that there is distension of the proximal part of the esophagus there is narrowing of about two to three centimeter length of the esophagus uh, but uh, the dye is passing into the stomach this is the stomach and you can see that the stomach is in its normal position it is below the diaphragm uh, so as the um, gastroesophageal junction it is below the diaphragm this case um, if you look at the barium study here, uh, you can see that this is the esophagus and this is part of the stomach that has passed above the diaphragm. Here you can see the domes of the diaphragm. Um, here part of the stomach below the diaphragm, but part of the stomach is above the diaphragm. And this is a congenital hiatal hernia. This is a six-week-old infant presented with non-bloody, non-bilous, non-projectile vomiting. And we will see the significance of this. What is significance of a bilus vomiting? What's the um, significance of a projectile vomiting? To differentiate it from other conditions, there was no cough, coughing or choking with the, the feeds. So there is no possibility here of having a, a fistula, um, a tracheoesophageal fistula. An upper GI study uh, re revealed this um, partially obstructing uh, sliding hiatal hernia and the cause for such a congenital anomaly is failure of lengthening of the esophagus normally the uh, with the development of the lung bud of from the uh, uh, from the foregut uh, the lung bud will uh, pass downwards it will uh, divide into right and left buds and as the lung bud is enlarging and passing downwards and together with the descent of the heart the esophagus uh, also lengthens. So failure of this lengthening of the esophagus results in short esophagus and the gastroesophageal junction will be above the diaphragm resulting in the hernia.